Once you've entered all your data into QuickPace, you'll likely want to see what you've collected, who has it, and when it's in need of attention. We use reporting to display this information. At the end of this session, you'll be able to display your data in tables, charts, calendars, and timelines, select various report types, filter your data, sort and group your results, choose between personal and public reports, customize your default report, control dynamic filtering, organize reports and charts, locate hidden embedded reports, and export reports to spreadsheets. Let's get started. QuickBase displays your data in tables, charts, graphs, calendars, and timelines. When you open your application, you land on your application's home pages, and most of the time you find reports displayed. Where you find these reports and how you make them is the subject of this lesson. Within each application, we have tables, and each of these tables have their own home pages and their own reports and charts. When I click on a table, we're presented with the table's default home page report. On the left, we have dynamic filtering, which lets us narrow our searches and model the data. We can select a filter and the results change. We can combine these filters, and when we're happy with the result, we can save them as new personal or shared reports. I mentioned that when you click on a table, you're presented with the table's home page. How can we change the table's default report? In the upper right corner, click on the Customize This Page. Here we can see which report has been selected as the default, and it is here that we can change which report we want displayed. Sometimes you will want different people to be shown different reports. You can select those reports here on a roll-by-roll -roll basis and assign a report. In this scenario, we want to edit the default report and add a new field or column to the report. We can scroll down, find the field we want, double-click the field or click this arrow, or click and drag the field where we want it to be displayed. If we save the report, we can now see the new field displayed. What if we want to change the field we use for dynamic filtering? We can do that by clicking on Customize This Page and editing the default report. Inside the report's properties, we can scroll down until we find the Filters section, and under the Dynamic, we can click Change. We can now locate the field and position it where we want. You can have up to five dynamic fields per report. It's usually a good bet that these are your multiple choice fields. By the way, you can shut off dynamic filtering right here too. Let's get out of here. If we choose, we can select and display this report in preview mode, save it as a new report, or simply save. We can now filter our report by the newly added field. When we click on the table's reports and charts, we're presented with a listing of that table's reports. We can see some of them are labeled as tables, some as charts, some as calendars, summary reports, and timelines. As we click on a report, we notice it's been added to the recent column. Whenever we like a report, we can always click Favorites, and it bookmarks it so that it will be saved under Favorites for quick access to frequently used reports. Let's create a new report. We click on Reports and Charts and select New. Here we can select whether we want to create a table report or a grid report, summary, chart, map, calendar, or timeline report. Let's start with a table report. We can name the report browse down the configuration page and select the options we want. Notice where we can select whether we want this to be a personal or common public report. We can select which roles can view it, select which columns to either include or exclude, I'll use the default, and we can choose to show all the records or filter them. If we select to filter our data, we've come to perhaps the most powerful part of QuickBase the feature that allows us to derive meaning from all of our data. Let's say only show me those records where the assigned to user is Colleen Garden. We can add additional filtering like where the status is not completed. Now we can see only Colleen's open tasks. Let's go back in and edit the report and remove the filtering and talk about how reports are sorted and grouped. We're back at the reports, customize this page, and if we scroll down to the Sorting and Grouping section, we can sort or group on other columns. Notice that sorting options are at the top while the grouping options are at the bottom. 
I tend to think of grouping as a way of subtotaling all the records by, say, assigned to. We can further sort or group. Let's sort by start, date. Now if we save the results, we can see that among all the tasks that are Albert's, and these are Chris Baker's, we can also see the number of tasks per person and the total number of days for each. Another shortcut to grouping can be made by clicking on the little arrow above each of the columns and selecting it to group from A to Z or Z to A. Now you see the report morph so that you can see the tasks by phase. You can save this update and create a whole new report. There are some advanced reporting options here that we should discuss. Let's customize this page and scroll way down to the Options section. Here you can highlight records based on criteria, also known as row colorization. You can click into the colorization formula box and insert the conditions for which you want the row to be colorized. If you hover over Insert a Field or Function, you can insert a field into a formula. If that formula field is true, the row will be colorized. Let's create a pie chart report of the budgets by project. We click on Reports and Charts and then New, and then select Chart and Create. Let's name the report Budgets by Project Pie. We scroll down to Chart Details and select Pie. Notice that the legend is not displaying the project names. We use the series to select project names and the legend updates. Now we're tracking budget amount, so let's select that underneath the data value option. And next under data labels, check data labels always visible and select value and name. This will help detail the report so that we can see the project name and its budget amounts right on the chart. If you use dynamic filtering, you can adjust the filter criteria on the fly. Many times people will create a report so that they can capture some data to export to a spreadsheet. They use the filtering in the column sections to define what they want. They then click on More and save the spreadsheet. This action downloads the data into a CSV file that can be launched into Excel or Numbers or any spreadsheet. Sometimes users do this so that they can export the data to be managed in a spreadsheet, add some data, and then import it back into QuickBase. When you click into a table and then into Reports and Charts, you can see there are column sections that you can click to collapse or expand. As you use reports, you can see them collect on the left column. QuickBase remembers the last four reports that you've used. If you are an administrator, you can also categorize your reports into their own collapsible sections. Click Organize and drag the report into the Drag Here box, give it a name like Charts, and click the green checkbox to save. You can then drag other reports into the new category. You can also click and drag them into the location you like. When you are viewing a form, you will frequently find embedded reports displayed right on the form. Where are these and how can I change them? Since they are displaying data from another table, we can find this report under the Tables Reports. But wait, what is the report's name? If you click Customize this form and scroll down, you can find the Report Link field on the left, and on the right you'll find the link to that report. If you click on the Report Link, what you'll find is that you can edit the columns, the groups, and the filtering, and save. This updates the embedded report. Another way to find this is by clicking on the table you want. In this case, it's Tasks, and then on Settings, and then on Reports and Charts. Notice the yellow flag and Hover. This report is not normally visible to users in your role. It is shown here because you have administrative access to this application. These reports can only be changed by administrators, so they are hidden and typically not shown to users who are not administrators. In this lesson, you learned how to display data in tables, charts, calendars, and timelines, select various report types, filter your data, sort and group your results, choose between personal and public reports, customize your default report, control dynamic filtering, organize reports and charts, locate hidden embedded reports, and export reports to spreadsheets. This concludes this lesson.